looking for some extreme machines? You don't know what big is until you've met the heavy metal mega movers at the Akati Diamond Mine. Located just 200 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle, Akati uses huge machines to work the tundra. Dump trucks as wide as your house. Shovels bigger than a scoop and drills taller than roller coasters. These monsters access more than 5 million carats of diamonds every year. To do it, they have to overcome incredible challenges, battling killer cold, moving mountains of earth, and blasting to dangerous depths. Only the toughest will survive. Northern Canada, one of the most forbidding places on Earth. Early explorers called this flat expanse the Barren Lands. But for a team of extreme machines, this is home. The Akati Diamond Mine, over 2,000 square kilometers of diamond-studded Earth. Three mega movers partner up like heavyweight wrestlers to pull the riches from the land. The nearly 30 meter tall D90 rotary blast drill, aka the driller. The D-Max 655 hydraulic shovel, a four-story monster simply called the D-Mag. And the 160-ton Caterpillar 793 haul truck, nicknamed the Cat. In their quest for diamonds, these machines will power through damaging rock and punishing weather. The future of the mine depends on their success. The Mega Movers have two critical missions. One build an underground tunnel to reach diamonds deep below an existing pit. Two, get a new pit, codenamed Fox Pit, into production stat. The Fox Pit will be an open pit mine. That means it will be dug from the surface down. Tens of millions of tons of rock must be removed to access the diamonds below. Mega Movers will have to work in expert coordination to move this mountain of Earth. The driller kicks things off with a blast. The massive machine bores holes as big as tree trunks for the explosives crew. Everything about this rig is big. Here's a guy. Here's his hope. Here's the driller. The driller combines overwhelming power with a wrenching twist. 30 meters above, a massive rod slams down against the rock face. The sharp, angled tip can rotate nearly a hundred times per minute. In just half an hour, it can pound holes one-third of a meter wide and 17 meters deep. Once the driller's opened up a new section of the pit, his partners go to work. The captain of the team moves in. The gigantic D-Mag shovel. The biggest piece of machinery on Akati's mine site. This D-Mag operator stands two meters tall. And here's a four meter backhoe. And here's the D-Mag. This monster stands four stories high with a shovel that can hold 40 men. Its jagged teeth are coated with a special steel alloy so that it can chomp through frozen granite, one of the hardest rocks on Earth. The 14-meter arm is powered by a pumping set of guns. Four massive cylinders that give the D-Mag the strength it needs to carve the rock. When the D-Mag's teeth bear down on the granite, the pressure's so intense it creates glass. The D-Mag uses this overwhelming strength to move tons of rock fast. 
some turbo. Actually, use it, we can put about uh, 240 tons or 218 metric tons on a truck in two minutes or less. We try and keep it under two minutes. After grabbing a mouthful of rock, the D-Mac tosses the load to his teammate, the super-sized cat haul truck. This bruiser tackles loads that would destroy ordinary machines. The cat is just the truck to haul a mountain of subarctic earth. Here's a cat driver. And here's a normal dump truck. It's almost twice his height. And finally, the cat. It towers over two stories high. Its wheels alone are nearly four meters tall. But the cat's most impressive feature? Its massive bed. So big, it could carry a dozen cars. In the fox pit, the cat's in constant motion, hauling hundreds of tons of ore. This is an all-star team of heavyweight movers. Ikati needs tough characters if it's going to get the fox pit in production. Diamond mining anywhere is hard work, but in the subarctic it requires spectacular strength and determination. For decades, few believed that diamonds could be found so far north. But in the 1980s, a team of geologists discovered special minerals, called indicator minerals, that are often found in diamond-rich regions. The geologists began hunting for diamonds, drilling deep underground. Just over a hundred meters down, the team struck pay dirt, a mineral formation of some of the largest, highest quality diamonds ever discovered. They christened the site the Panda Pit and formed the Akati Diamond Mine. But the challenges were just beginning. Like all mining operations in the far north, Akati poses environmental hazards. Mining creates waste rock and pollutants and can disrupt wildlife. To protect the tundra's delicate ecosystem, Akati works with the Canadian government to monitor pollution and oversee replanting to minimize the mine's impact on the land. The operation's lasting effect is a matter of debate, but one thing is certain. As long as the public wants diamonds, they'll continue to be mined. Yet the valuable stones are a limited resource and the surface pit at the Panda Mine was harvested of diamonds over a year ago. It's now closed. But recently, Akati came up with a radical new plan, one that could bring the Panda Mine back to life. Geologists believe a narrow pipe of diamond-rich rock lies waiting just below the Panda Pit. The trick is how to get it out. The Mega Movers can't get this deep, but a tunnel could access the previously unreachable gems. To build it, Akati will use a crack team of underground machines. They'll dig a tunnel two kilometers long, removing approximately 200,000 tons of earth. The project, nicknamed the Panda Tunnel, broke ground in 2003. If the mission is successful, Akati can access a whole new stock of diamonds. Engineers say the Panda Tunnel could deliver close to 5 million carats, including some of the highest quality gems produced from the claim site. The stakes could be higher. Future loads from the Panda Tunnel and the Fox Pit have to yield pay dirt. Diamond encrusted earth. These sparkly rocks are what the mission is all about. To get the prize, the Mega Movers will use muscle in the fox pit. But down in the tunnel, where the giants can't go, a crew of mining machines relies solely on strategy. The work will test both teams to the max. Akati runs on a brutally simple equation. The mine
they must find one carat of diamonds in every ton of ore. This landscape may seem cold and forbidding now, but millions of years ago it was a subterranean hotbed of activity. Violent volcanic eruptions gushed from deep inside the earth. Lava spewed upwards towards the earth's surface. It carried a hidden treasure, tiny particles of carbon that had compacted from inner earth pressure and heat. Diamonds. The diamond-rich lava quickly cooled. It formed carrot-shaped pipes of rock called kimberlite. These kimberlite pipes are what Akati mines today. The mega movers shovel out the large carrot top of the kimberlite pipe. And soon, with the panda tunnel, Akati hopes to mine the narrow rich route. But a major obstacle stands between the machines and their prize. A layer of granite surrounds the kimberlite like a bank vault holding gems. The only way to get the treasure out is to break in. In the fox pit, a band of mega movers assembles to bust the diamonds free. Each morning, the controllers at dispatch unleash the metal monsters. Two mammoth d -max. Two drillers. And thirteen ball caps. Expertly trained operators drive the beast. It takes months of on-the-job training to fill this seat. Perched high above the fox pit, Dispatch hands out orders and monitors all that goes on below. Like a nerve center, Dispatch is the brain behind the Mega Mover's muscle. It keeps the metal giants constantly moving in the right direction. The Mega Movers carve the pit according to the shape of the Kimmer-like pipe. The machines scrape away at the granite to reveal a dark layer of diamond-bearing kimberlite below. They make smaller and smaller circles as the carrot-shaped pipe descends into the earth. The machines leave a platform as they sculpt. It's called a bench and it strengthens the rock face. The terraced walls protect against deadly landslides and they offer an easy way in and out of the pit. The Mega Mover's assignment in the Fox Pit is deceptively simple. The machines remove a half million tons of granite and kimberlite every week. But here in the subarctic, the vicious cold and granite can take their toll, slowing the machines down. For a car team, movement is money and staying in motion is the only way to get the job done. The Mega Movers tackle the challenge with a proven five-step strategy. Drill, blast the rock, scoop up the rubble, haul it to the plant, and separate the diamonds from the dirt. It all starts with drilling time. While four leveling jacks hold the base steady, the driller locks and loads. Each time the drill bit hits the ground, sharp angles on the bit chip the earth. It rotates so fast, it looks like a twister. In less than 30 minutes, the driller makes a 17-meter hole in the armor-hard rock. But even the driller has a tough time with the resistant granite. The rock wears out dozens of drill bits a month. After drilling about 100 holes, it's time for another bit. At $3,000 per bit, it's a pricey operation. Just a pound of the, the, that the drill bit does to just get down to the solid rock. But that's what takes a pull on a bit. To... Step two, blasting. Meet the demolition. 
demolition team, a four-man crew known as the Blasters. Twelve hours a day, the Blasters feed the drillers' holes with packs of ammonium nitrate, often braving falling rocks and temperatures so low they can snap freeze exposed skin in seconds. We do try to do it as efficiently and safely as possible because uh, things go wrong, wrong and it's not a good thing when you're dealing with explosives. The blasters map out the detonation site. It's more than a half kilometre long plot. They follow a plan called the blast pattern that shows where to place the explosives. Today's blast pattern has almost 200 holes. The blasters plant each with about 800 kilograms of explosives. Enough ammonium nitrate to rip a man to pieces and turn granite into flying shrapnel. The detonation will demolish about 50,000 tons of rock, a huge chunk of the pit face. To see how big that is, watch as everyone clears the pit. The last truck out crosses right over the demolition zone. It looks like an ant on a highway. Now, blast time. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see that again. A main detonation wire links the fuses on each of the blast holes. As the main line burns down, the explosives ignite in a flash of red like a string of firecrackers. tears a massive chunk of kimberlite and granite from the pit, food for the beasts looming outside. Next, step three, Shovel, starring the King Kong of Akati, the d -Mac. This brute is the first mega machine back into the danger zone, ready to devour the remains. The D-Mag is an insatiable monster. Every hour its bucket or clam scoops up to 4,500 tons of kimberlite, the equivalent of 900 school buses. It has to move fast. The operator has just 5 seconds to load his bucket and just 30 seconds between dumps. This heavy lifting requires brawn and brains. As the D-Mag shovels, it sculpts the pit face. Using its full four stories of height, the D-Mag pulls away the crumbled rock, starting at the bottom of the pile and carefully scraping up. One false move and tons of unstable rock could come pouring down the cliff, and a granite landslide is an ugly way to go. Just in case, the D-Mag has an armoured windshield and a dead man switch to cut the engine if the situation gets out of control. Step 4. Hauling with the cat. Where there's a D-Mag, you're always sure to find its accomplice, the cat, ready to carry off the loot. The cat is the team's champion weightlifter. It catches four full scoops from the D-Mag before filling up. The cat's designed to catch punishing loads. An eight-degree V-slope bed gently receives unstable loose rock and shifts it to the bed's center. This protects the cat from losing its balance during loading, an important feature when a mega truck's hauling 218 tons of diamond-studded rock. 
That's like carrying three dozen elephants. Few other dog trucks on earth can handle such a heavy load. Hugging the steep access road, the cat prowls to its final destination. Step 5. Processing. The process plant is the heart of Akati's mining operation. It's here that Diamonds and Dirt part company. This is a non-stop operation, processing 12,000 tons of kimberlite ore a day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. At the plant, the diamond-bearing ore is crushed and scrubbed, ground and sorted. In the final stage, the diamonds are recovered via x-ray machines and grease tables. From this, the plant yields about one diamond carat per ton of ore. That's about a coffee can of diamonds a day. It may not sound like much, but at that rate, Akati extracts about five million carats of diamonds a year. The rough stones are then cut, polished and sent to Belgium to be sorted and sold. As the mega movers push ahead in the fox pit, deep underground the panda team moves closer to their goal. A band of unique subterranean machines have been constructing the tunnel for months. The tunnel is a narrow 5 meter wide passage stretching down to the Kimberlite pipe, only 40 meters in diameter. A conveyor belt will bring the ore directly to the process plant. If this were to scale, the tunnel would look like a thread. Tunnel construction is always challenging work, but the Panda tunnel is harder than most. It will be extremely long, more than two kilometers. At that length, getting the tunnel to line up with its target is a high-stakes feat of engineering. Even the slightest miscalculation in direction can take on troublesome proportions over a two-kilometer course. And this tunnel must be completely straight, or the conveyor belt can't be installed. To make matters worse, down here, compasses aren't accurate. Instead, engineers must rely on charts and graphs. Above ground, the machines win with muscle, but underground, precision and accuracy are what counts. The engineers regularly check coordinates. At the moment, the tunnel looks spot on. We've got a test hole, and from the test hole indications, uh, the line is bang on, and the elevation seems to be pretty close to where we should be. As the team digs towards the hidden treasure, the Akati camp braces against an approaching deadline. The mine depends on the outside world for supplies, but a change of season is about to force their supply road to close. The next few days are Akati's last chance to haul in most of the crucial supplies the machines need to pull off their missions. Without the right equipment, the mega movers won't make it through the months ahead. Akati is one of the most remote diamond mines on Earth. Located in Canada's Northwest Territories, it's just 200 kilometers below the Arctic Circle. The closest city is Yellowknife, over 300 kilometers away. Keeping Akati and its monster machines rolling is like taking an army to the dark side of the moon. Mega parts, fuel, building materials, everything has to be shipped in. Everything. It's a huge job, requiring a fleet of monster trucks. They're called Super Bees, and they can haul 80 tons in a single load. But there's only one road to Akati, the Ice Road.
It's made almost entirely of frozen lakes and marshlands. The road can only be used for a brief 8 to 12 weeks in late winter, when the ice is thickest. The rest of the year, the weather's simply too warm. The frozen lakes melt and the marshland becomes dangerously soft, unable to bear the weight of the super beams. This means the trucks have just two months to haul a year's worth of the most critical supplies to the camp. If they fall short, the mega movers won't have what they need to run, and the mine could face a shutdown. Now, with spring right around the corner, the final convoys embark on a risky trip across thinning ice. The loads that are coming now are priority loads that have to get in the camp as well. The trucks are loaded with critical supplies. Ammonium nitrate to blast the frozen rock and a special Arctic grade fuel to keep the mega movers running in the sub-Arctic. It's an explosive payload, made even more dangerous by the ice road's deteriorating condition. After just two months of use, it's torn up from the heavy freight trucks. This last caravan will have to be careful not to put too much weight on the ice road at once or risk crashing through. So the Super Bees travel in small groups of four. They drive a kilometer apart to give the road time to heal. As we're rolling along, um, you're fracturing the ice and there's cracking and, and, and there's taking place. And there's a lot more apart. You get some chance for the ice to heal a little bit and also it doesn't put too much weight in any one spot. Fifteen hours later, they roll into a carty. The dangerous run has gone off without a hitch. But there's a development at the mine. The mighty D-Mac, the Super Shovel, is showing signs of slowing down. In this killing cold, maintenance is a must. The Mega Movers undergo routine checkups about once a month. It's the only way to protect the machines from the damaging weather. This clam or bucket, we've got probably close to a foot of steel, a foot thick, in the, uh, in the base of this bucket. And in extreme cold, we can crack it right out. We can drop those teeth off very easily, just snap off the tooth like a carrot, and uh, then we're in all sorts of trouble. Gary Air supervises maintenance at Takata. He pulls the DMAG out of action for a scheduled tune-up. But he and his team must work fast. They have just 48 hours to diagnose and fix the Mega Mover. Any longer, and the cold can seriously damage the machine. During maintenance, the DMAG is shut down and its internal temperature plunges. If the D-Max stays off for more than two days, the engine, the hydraulics, and even the oil can freeze, making it inoperable. The Cardi needs the D-Mag in motion. It's up to maintenance to get the Super Shovel back in shape. Gary and a team of 40 men will work around the clock with the precision planning of a massive surgical team. They divide into groups each focusing on different tasks. Each group works 12 hours on and then is replaced by a second shift. It's an exhausting and pressure-filled schedule. Yeah, the, the pressure's huge. There's always somebody biting your arse wondering when you're going to get it ready to go. They've got a lot to do, and even small jobs become mega work on a machine this big. Try getting an oil change on a machine that uses over 10,000 litres. Next, lubing all of the joints. The DMAC has hundreds. In this extreme cold, the grease on the joints freezes and loses its lubricant quality. If a joint goes too long without new grease, catastrophic failure occurs. 
The moving parts create so much friction, they weld together and lock in place. As one team tackles the joints, experts focus in on a damaged cylinder. A falling rock dented the metal. The casing could spill oil, a huge environmental hazard. The DMAG can't work until the cylinder is replaced. The maintenance crews get to work. Without a DMAG, the diamonds won't dig themselves. While the Fox Pit slows down, below ground the fearless Panda Tunnel team surges ahead. Down here there's no place for anyone who's afraid of the dark. The air pumped in from above tastes like the inside of a mechanic's garage. And when a rock falls, there's nowhere to run. The only light comes from the miner's headlamps and from the eyes of the subterranean machines. The beasts that dwell down here are specially designed for such conditions. Long, flat, compact. The scoop tram. The haul truck and the powerful jumbo drill. These are the underground cousins of the giants that work the fox pit. But instead of brute force, these machines rely on precision planning to reach the diamonds. They're the elite safe crackers of the mining world. And this dangerous environment demands a careful strategy. Their first move, punching holes for the explosives. The 20-ton jumbo drill pounds into the granite. This machine has two muscular drilling boots, so it can do the work of two drills at once. Each boom bores a horizontal hole four meters deep. Open pit mining usually uses much deeper holes, but the strategy in the tunnel is different. Here they use a lot of shallow drill holes instead of a few deep holes. This allows more control over the explosion, key for such a small space. The jumbos create 54 meter holes. Just enough to blow out nearly 70 cubic meters. Now it's time for the blasters to do their thing. They pack the holes with ammonium nitrate. They use a formula called the powder factor to determine the amount of explosives needed to break away a specific amount of rock. For granite, it's about a half kilogram per ton. As rock explodes, its volume expands by 33%. Add too much nitrate and there will be more destruction than the small tunnel can handle. The tunnel's five meters tall and six meters across. There's no room for a mistake. The team retreats and waits for the terrifying roar. The explosion pries 70 cubic meters of rock from the tunnel's depths. The cleanup crew moves right in. The scoop tram bullies its way through the tunnel to shovel up the loose rock known as muck. This is the riskiest part of the job. Ceiling rocks shaken loose by the explosion can come crashing down. Miners call the shards the silent killer. The scoop tram's long, sturdy frame prepares it for any assault. The driver's cabin is strategically in the middle, clear of the danger zone. Meanwhile, up in front, the scoop's giant mouth grabs nearly 15 tons of muck with a chop. It passes the load to the Cat AD45, a large underground haul truck. Flattened and compact, it weighs just 40 tons when empty. 
It's only 10 meters long and can turn on a dime. But this baby can haul nearly 45 tons of rock in a single load. That's like moving eight mobile homes at once. It hustles up the ramp to empty its bed and return for more. After a couple of passes, the entire pile of muck is gone. And the tunnel's five meters longer. But the work's not over yet. The tunnel walls and ceiling are a minefield of potential falling rock. A silent killer could come raining down, blocking the new passage, or worse, killing someone. The tunnel must be made secure. The automated rock bolter takes the stage. It builds a sturdy infrastructure for the new section. First, it drills holes into the tunnel ceiling. Next, it inserts two meter rebar rods, locking them into place with resin and steel plates. The rebar resin mix works to cement the rock in place. Further support comes from a wire mesh spread over the rock's surface. The safe crackers have burrowed five meters closer to the prize. And now that the new section's secure, they start the whole process over again. To build the two-kilometer tunnel, they'll need to move about 200,000 tons of dirt. They'll have to work fast and hope they're on target. As the Mega Movers wrestle on in the Fox Pit, the subarctic cold claims another victim. The metal giants already lost to D-Mac, temporarily. And now there's trouble with one of the 13 cats. The team's down two players. That's a big problem if they're going to stay in the game. Once again, their mission depends on expert maintenance. The cat rolls into the repair shop. The job here is simple. Get the haul truck back in action as quickly as possible. The maintenance team responds like a pit crew at a stock car race. Most of the time, the cat needs light maintenance, new tires or struts. But today, it's got real issues. It's suffering from engine trouble. A mechanical heart attack. A car team needs the cat back in the game. The fastest way to do that is a transplant. Thanks to the ice road convoy, a new mega engine is standing by. The cat's ailing heart is eased out. All 12 and a half tons of it. The new engine hovers nearby. 16 giant cylinders fire this 2,300 horsepower engine. Now the maintenance crews have to slip the colossal part into the chassis. There's no room for error. The mount's designed to fit the engine like a glove. This is high-stakes surgery. One false move could damage the engine and the machine. The engine catches on a groove. We need something up top, and I'm not sure. There's barely time for backslapping as the cat roars back to work. The pressure's on. This mega mover has some catching up to do. Across 
tablets and underground in the Panda Tunnel, the conveyor team is also facing a critical test. Today, a survey team will check the tunnel's course. Now, the million dollar question. Are they on target? The tunnel could access a treasure trove of previously unreachable gems. If it works, the panda mine would have a second life. But if it fails, the panda mine's future will be in serious jeopardy. A surveyor takes measurements. He uses a laser and a survey tool called a theolodite to pinpoint the exact location of the tunnel. Something's wrong. He checks again. And confirms. The tunnel is off course. The tunnel is veering away from the bottom of the panda pit. For every 64 meters, it's off by one millimeter. It's a tiny difference, but over a tunnel this long, it has a huge impact. Over the tunnel's two kilometer length, it will swing wide by one and a half meters. An error this severe will make it impossible to install the conveyor system. It's, it's a huge issue because uh, any curve or any turn and it, uh, the installation of the conveyor can't play take place. The team has to straighten out the problem, literally. They can't fix the tunnel from here. But they can redirect the tunnel by building towards it from the bottom of the panda pit. It's a backup plan they've been holding in reserve. Now, they put it into action. The machines relocate, using a narrow passage on the edge of the Kimberlite pipe. From there, they'll start digging up towards the original tunnel, working at a new angle so that the two ends line up. Akati can only do it one way, with Mega Movers. The team of underground giants gets to work. Above ground in the Fox Pit, the captain of the team is completing its physical. A dented cylinder in the D-Mag's massive arm has been successfully replaced. But then, just when it looks ready to roll, a mechanic discovers a potentially fatal problem. Hidden under the granite grime. A crack. We just found a major, major crack on the bottom of the car body. But a three-inch crack comes down on the side of the car body, comes up across the top of the upper lip. It's a hairline fracture in the most important part of the D-Mag, the car body. Like a spine, the car body joins the two tracks of the vehicle, holds the superstructure in place, and supports the massive hydraulic shovel. If the crack isn't repaired, the vehicle could collapse in the middle of operation. But fixing the crack will take time, and that could cause even bigger problems. Not only could the prolonged cold seriously damage the D-Mag, but the entire Mega team could suffer. When the D-Mag's down, it has a domino effect, throwing all of the other machines off schedule. Head of maintenance, Gary Ayres, faces a tough choice. If we don't do it, we run a very high risk of uh, losing the machine for a long period of time. If we uh, did some severe damage to the car body, we could potentially be out for a few weeks. Gary huddles with the maintenance team to make a decision. It's certainly worthwhile getting it done, even though it does take us past seven for the The team works as fast as possible. There's a slight chance they could fix the DMAG within the critical 48 hour window. They'll weld the crack.
But first, they have to heat up the car body's metal, or the weld won't hold. The men cover the D-Mag with heat blankets and raise the metal's temperature to 100 degrees. Next, they weld for eight hours straight. Finally, they'll cool the metal down, slowly. Like a newly mended limb, the weld must acclimatize to its surroundings before taking on stress. Any rush and moisture will get into the weld, ruining it. Daylight and the deadline are just hours away. For the D-Mag, it's a battle against time and the elements. The Super Shovel's future and the Mega Team's success hang in the balance. It's zero hour in the Panda Tunnel at Akati Diamond Mine. The team has worked for over a year to construct the tunnel from the process plant to a previously unreachable section of Kimberlite Pipe. Along the way, they suffered a common setback. The tunnel was off course. Determined to succeed, the team began digging from below the bottom of the panda pit, hoping this new, lower tunnel would line up with what had already been built. Today they'll find out. Has it worked? The two sides of the tunnel should now be just five meters apart. Months of planning, surveying, digging and drilling come down to one final blast. On the top down side of the tunnel, a demolition team packs the breakthrough wall with an explosive called ANFO, ammonium nitrate fuel oil. It's a fertilizer and diesel mix. This is strong stuff. Less than a kilogram can blow away one ton of rock. The explosives have to be placed perfectly in order to control their destructive power. The slightest mistake and the blasters could blow up a support wall, triggering a massive cave-in. Unlike the Fox Pit, the depths of the Panda Tunnel offer no escape. Thin red detonation wire is all that stands between the present calm and the coming blast. The mega movers and miners take shelter at the top of the tunnel. They're seconds away from a massive explosion that will bring either a diamond rich future or failure. Out of the darkness, has it worked? In slow motion, watch as the main fuse ignites the individual explosives. Their detonation pulsates out perfectly, obliterating the dividing wall, but leaving the support walls intact. And behind the huge gaping hole, Success! The bottom tunnel passage is almost perfectly aligned. It's been a pretty uh, challenging uh, experience, I think. Uh, we've, we're pretty happy today. It's a monumental achievement, and the miners Beauty. know it. Road through, yeah, perfect. Road through, perfect. Beauty. Together with the Mega Movers, they've extended the life of the Panda Mine, gaining access to as much as 5 million carats of top quality diamonds. That's a lot to celebrate. And there's more good news on the way. Outside, another snowy morning breaks in a carty, and a much-missed player rolls back out into the fox pit. Incredibly, it's on deadline. The D-Mag's up.
and the 700 ton monsters ready to go. Like nervous coaches, the mechanics watch the shovel warm up. The next few minutes are critical. After sitting motionless for two days in the subarctic cold, the DMAC might not work. The longer the machine sits, the harder it is to get it started again. And even though the DMAC moves, it may not be able to shovel. Slowly the giant arm extends. But can it lift? Oh yeah, King Kong is back in action. Its arms springing up and down as if reborn. Its body ready to take a beating again. It's a proud moment for all who work with the Mega Beaver. This machine is extremely important to, to mechanic. But, you know, having said that, the, the shovel is nothing without the truck drivers, the trucks, it's nothing without the dozer operators. I mean, there's no doubt it's, it's, a, it's a full chain. With the D-Mag back on track, production in the Fox Pit roars to life. The Mega Movers have been tested by one of the harshest environments on Earth. And after each round of battle, these machines keep bouncing back. The awesome Driller. The mighty D-Mag. And the unstoppable Cat have accomplished amazing tasks. Today, an impressive fox pit stretches more than 100 meters into the Earth. Each day, the Mega Movers burrow deeper, prying loose the frozen soil's dazzling treasure. Underground, the Panda Tunnel pulses with activity. Soon, the conveyor belt will transport diamonds from previously unreachable depths. It's an incredible success by an unstoppable team. A winning combination of metal bodies and iron will.